Os presento a Rodrigo Vidal, que es investigador de la Universidad de Santiago de Chile y es una de las personas que trabaja en la secuenciación del genoma de salmón, junto con un equipo canadiense y un equipo noruego. El salmón es una de las especies más importantes en acuicultura, entonces de ahí el interés en la secuenciación del, del, del salmón. Él está especialmente interesado en la relación entre el genoma y diversas patologías. Entonces ya empezaré con la charla. Gracias, Paloma. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my talk is, is in English, but it's, it's, it's very strange because the number of the people that speak Spanish is, is huge, that the people that speak in English. But uh, anyway, I, I think that this is important because mm, currently there are another people in another part of this world uh, maybe looking this this talk. Um, okay, first, my, thank you very much to Paloma, thank you very much to the University of Vigo, to the opportunity to present uh, just some parts of my investigation of my group. Uh, anyway, here is a lot of people involved in this work, the people from Norway, the people from Canada, and the people from Australia, of course, people, another group of Chile, uh, and the future, I think, I hope, is people from Spain, principal Paloma. Uh, okay, uh, my research and my interest of my group is in link of transcriptomic and immunoresponse. Uh, we call it this mix immunogenomics. This is link between genomics, uh, principal uh, structural genomics and functional genomics, and the uh, immunoresponse. So the focus of my talk today is in two principal disease, very important to Chile, um, very important to another country, principal Norway, principal uh, Canada, um, Islam, Faroe. So, uh, when, when we heard the name of Chile, maybe the first is to think is alone country, and it's really, yeah, we have a long country. But uh, the principal focus of the, our area of aquaculture is in the southern of Chile, the Portomón to the southern. And the northern of Chile, principal, uh, you, you can see there, Santiago is in the middle, and the first green is the northern of Chile, in city called Coquimbo and Caldera, is just about three percent of nothing more ag aquaculture. The principal species in the northern of Chile with the, uh, with the focus of the production is flat feet like uh, turbot, uh, a little of uh, uh, muscle, and nothing more. So the, about the 95% of the production of the aquaculture in Chile is this, it's the focus of the southern of Chile. It's, it's, very, it's very funny because we, it's not aquaculture, it's salmoniculture, but the principal species that we cultivate in the, in the southern of Chile is salmon. Uh, the principal species that my country focus is Atlantic salmon, coco salmon, tinoc, rainbow turtle, and in the northern of Chile, starboard. But, of course, uh, the most important, because the price on the market, this is a business issue, is uh, Atlantic salmon. Uh, in second term, is coho and rainbow true. So we have a focus in salmonid. For my country, the salmoniculture is a very principal uh, interest because it's a uh, of the principal uh, economic importance and the social importance, of course. Uh, the salmonid is a very complex uh, group of species because they have a big problem. It's a duplication. Uh, more or less 50 or 60 million ago, we have the first duplication of, in this group of, of species. And you can see in these three different species, and 
a lot of species have a genome project working now. For instance, cod, uh, medaka, tilapia, and there are another model species like fugu or tertadon with the own genome project. So, uh, in this moment, in this group of the salmon on truth, we don't have uh, any project. But currently, we are working in the genome of project. It's a consortium between Canada, Norway, and Chile to sequence uh, the all genome of uh, salmon, Atlantic salmon. And there are another group with France and USA and maybe Chile. Uh, we are thinking to start another genome project to sequence uh, the, uh, the, all the complete genome of salmon trout. So, uh, the first problem we do face with this species is the genome size is very huge, it's big. It's more or less the same uh, genome of the, any human, about three, 300 million of per base, and more or less 13 or 25 something uh, gene. So it's a huge genome, and the, with the duplication, it's more complicated. So uh, when we start to work in the genome of salmon, we know that's problem. And of course, we know it's a very, very, very complex challenge to try to suit this, this genome. Um, in any process of the industrial cultivation, like salmon culture, the principal problem to uh, see in this culture is the disease and the diet, nutrition. There are two principal problems, disease and nutrition. In the case of disease, of course, we, we have an overlap of of issue, the, uh, the pathogen, virus, bacteria, of course, the host, but any species, the, the immune response of the any species is very different. Just one example, for instance, to ISA is a very important virus, but the salmon coho is resistant to ISA, but Atlantic salmon, no. Both species are salmonid, but are in different genus. But the first question is, why one species is resistant and why another species is susceptible? It's very interesting. Another issue in this area is the environmental. But uh, in the cultivar, all the people try to control it in the best way possible the environmental. So the principal idea here is the diet, because there are big problems to feed all the fish. Why? Uh, Ten years ago, the principal diet, the principal origin of the protein in the diet is animal protein. But currently, the diet, the protein in the diet is very expensive. But the principal origin of the, the protein in this diet is the fish. But there are not more fish, so it's very, very expensive. So it's necessary to make a chain to the protein diet from animal to the vegetal diet. So the question is, what is the impact in one animal that uh, to natural origin of the protein is animal if you feed with this species with vegetal protein? What is impact in the immunological response? What is impact in the growing? Uh, there are many, 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 many questions. So, uh, the principal impact, of course, of the any, any crisis of virus or bacteria is a decrease of, pro of production. And that is the principal, principal real interest for my country. How is possible to lower the number of the diet individual when we have an outbreak of disease? We have a many alternatives. Vaccine, for instance, immunostimulant, for instance. But 
the idea is this alternative work well or no? So uh, maybe some uh, in this room, maybe any people from maybe this room saw this film. It's a typical film from Hollywood. The name is The Perfect Storm. It's a, it's a typical history. It's a fisherman with a principal interest in code, and this fisherman in the Atlantic North go to the sea. In this moment, this fisherman uh, find on two storm, and the, this storm overlap, and he is in his boat is in the middle. So the same idea I have uh, four years ago when we have an economic crisis, a war economic crisis, and the first outbreak of the ISA, plus another virus, IPN, plus a bacteria, and plus one parasitate, Calibus. So if you merge economic crisis with all this disease, we have the perfect storm. It's a very, very complicated situation. So, we, we have this problem, we have our first perfect storm four years ago. So in this moment, the government, the government of Chile say, okay guys, we need solution. We need solution for this problem. Uh, in this moment, we talk with the government and say, okay, we work in disease, we work in nutrition and we work in stress. We have a lot of data in, in each of the three areas, but we, we will focus in this talk in disease. So, uh, what is the normal application of the know-how in salmon tree? We have maybe three steps. We have prevention. Of course, we give to the old individual immunostimulant, antivirals, that is very complicated, with antiviral maybe create resistance. Uh, we, we try to allow the stress, because all the people know that they, we have stress, the response of the, uh, to virus or bacteria is very low. And after we have diagnosis, screening, uh, looking, new pathology, stress evaluation, and diet evaluation. And then we have the third and the last step, therapy. The principal therapy now is vaccine. Well, but every you know in this room know that the vaccine don't work very well. The cover of the vaccine in all group is not perfect. So any, uh, any people in animal production think that they, I put one vaccine in any individuals or any group of individual, I hope that they will have a cover of 100% of protection. But the reality is not that. We have 15, 14% of protection. So we have 16% of the animal with vaccine that died. So what happened? What is the problem? The problem is the vaccine. Of course, we can think uh, the vaccine don't work. Yes, maybe it's one alternative. Or, or we can think also that this individual, that this strain, that this family don't respond for this particular vaccine. Maybe the vaccine is very good, but the problem is not the vaccine. The problem is the response of this strain. So what is necessary? We need a lot of vaccine for every particular strain, for every particular species, for every particular group? Maybe. In human, now, this is called personalized medicine. Now, we know that every group, every family, respond in one particular way. So, this therapy need to make an evolution from to the next step, that the next step is we need a vaccine 
to every particular group. Now in my country, in all the world, when, when, I, when I think that all the world is not all the world, it's just three or four parts of this world. I think in, in Chile, Nor Norway, Canada, Isas Faroe, Irlanda, nothing more. The principal country with salmon culture activity. But this country, now, if we can look how many vaccines are uh, in the market to ISA 10, 11, to IPN 8, 6, six vaccines. So we have to, a lot of vaccines to choose. Okay. Uh, the genetics, you know, is very old. <laughs> the first uh, application of the empirical genetics is a very, very old. But we can see that gen the genomics is very new, just 10 years ago. 10 years ago, more or less. When it start the post-genomic era? Maybe with the first release of the, the first draft of the human genome with Craig Venter, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. In this moment, it start post-genomic area. Why? Maybe because the people think that the more complex genome published was the human. Of course, uh, before of this genome uh, come another genome very important, and after of genome there are many genomes of bacteria. But bacteria have very simple organisms. So maybe when uh, we can mark or put a flag in the time when it start the postgenomics area is with the release of the first draft of the human genome. Because, again, it's a more complex organisms. So we have just the history in my, in my area, 10 years. It's a few years. So uh, we have uh, the typical cascade. We, when you can start with the structural genome, and then we pass to the functional genomics or transcriptomics, we have, and then we can pass to the proteomics, and then functionomics, morphonomics, and believe me, you can uh, go then to glycogenomics, plexinomics, metabolomics, lipidogenomics, epigenomics, and blah 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 blah, and it's not a comics. It's, it's really, and uh, many people that just concentrate in just one particular area with gly glycogenomics, for instance. So the most important here is that to go to this step, for instance, proteomic, you need, after, a good transcriptomic. Of course, if you can start here in this area, transcriptomic, you need a good genome. It's very complicated to pass from structural genomics or genomics and go to the functional genomics, for instance, or proteomics. It's very complicated. So the principal idea is do, it's necessary for everyone to go step by step. I say, I want mean to the uh, genome to the functional genomics, to the proteomics, and then it's very complicated to try to start from the structural genomics and go immediately to the proteomics. Why? It's very easy. Because we need the gene. Without gene, just we can see with proteomics a spot everywhere. Maybe many people here uh, have the opportunity to see the gel of the proteomic 2D, typical 2D and 2D dimension. It's just a spot. But we can sequence this spot with a mass, mass spectromic. But if we, we don't know the gene, we don't know what is this spot. So it's complicated. So uh, two years ago, we start to, with a, International Consortium to sequencing the Atlantic genome, like a reference of the genome of the, all the Salmonids. And believe me, it's a very, very 
very complicated organisms. Maybe the most important and most complicated organism sequencing in the history. It's very complicated. There are many people working in this project. Of course, there are three countries, but there are many people. People at JCBI, Great Pantry Institute, people for uh, Institute of, Be of Beijing in China, people working on the France. There are many people trying to help in this genome, but it's very complicated. And the principal complication of the genome are the duplication and the repetition. There are a lot of repetition. What is the problem with the duplication? The typical phase of the one duplication is to make a copy, and this copy degenerate, and this copy continues being functional. This is the typical way of one duplication. The typical history what any people teach in any classroom. Okay, of course, they are just parallelous copy, and this, and this copy degenerate. But currently, we know that at least two alternatives more. Second alternative, of course, we have one duplication, any duplication. But this copy is not degenerate. This copy occur a new function. And the last alternative is this copy now is a sub-functionalization. So we have two alternatives more than the classical alternative. For this, it's very complicated. So I think that it's necessary to have and glycomics and metabolomics, all the omics, is another uh, comics. It's necessary we have group, concentrate, focus in just particular area. Well, uh, we, are, we, we can translate this thing of cascade from structural genomics to the transcriptomic, proteomics, etc. And we can translate this idea in some monoculture culture, we can have that. And uh, it's more or less the same idea when we have a, a salmon genome sequencing. We are expecting to have the first draft of the genome in the end of the next year. And now in GeneBank is uh, when the first assembly with the three fold. In September, we are expecting to have another assembly of the five or six fold, and uh, again, in the end of the next year, the first draft. When we have the first draft, for us, it's possible to uh, have uh, a complete genetic map. With the complete genetic map, we can map or put flag in the molecular market between QTL, you know QTL, the region or genomic zone that responsibly ought to uh, the respond of the some trace. For instance, resistant. Resistant is a very, very complicated trace. It's not just a, a typical Mendelian trace where just involve one gene. The immunological response is involved a lot of gene. It may be three or four QTL, but each QTL is a very big song of fountain per base. When you have molecular market, no molecular marker in the when the start and when the finish. So if we have the genome, for instance, from this corner to the next corner, on the this corner all the genome, and we have flag of this marker. We can put this flag here, when they start the QTL work. We start the finished marker here, and we have the QTL. And we can map this QTL in this genome. And we can find 
what is the gene in this region? So, if there are a lot of genes, of course. But in this group of the, of the gene, there are many genes with interest, with ontology to the response. So, for this is very important. Now, they are QTL to the grow, they are QTL to the color, they are QTL to the resistance, they are QTL, blah, blah, blah. There are many QTL, a huge sum. All the people in this work, from the private company principal, are waiting to the genome. Because these people take this QTL and put in the genome. And say, oh, this is the gene, it's very interesting. Look, there are many genes in this QTL. Perfect. All the people is waiting that. So, of course, with the genetic map, we have the QTL, and uh, we will overlap in the salmon genome, and we have, like say, one friend, rock and roll. And, of course, of the... Oh, sorry. Oh. Anyway. So, we can go to the trunkristone when the first, the first, uh, the most important uh, technology in this area is macroarray, of course, and then we can go to the proteomics when we have the annotation of the genome. We can pass without problem to the proteomics, and all this technology move to the look. What is the candidate gene? Candidate gene for everywhere. So, grow, resistant, color, blah, 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 blah. And we can apply this candidate gene in structural action, product quality, pathogen interaction, therapy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, sometime we have the trends of think that the life is very easy. It's very good. It's very good to wake up all days in the morning and think, okay, God, thank you. Uh, I can see the sun, <laughs> the, 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 the life is very beautiful, it's perfect. When we go to the laboratory, <laughs> we uh, to get face to face with the reality. And the reality say that the and the, maybe the life is not very easy. Why? Uh, the problem with the complex traits like immunoresponse is the heritability. Heritability is a quantitative concept, populational concept. I mean, uh, it's a concept that they involve how are the possibility, how is the probability to I have one parental with any trait, for instance, grow? And how is the possibility or probability to trespass, to, to go this trait to the new generation? The heritability, like you know, is go to the zero uh, to one. One is perfect heritability is maybe like a clone, like a bacterial reproduction. All is the same. And the zero, I mean, I have a parent, I have some trait, but I have a very, very, very low probability of transfer this trait to my child. That is the concept. The problem with the heritability is that maybe like trait, like grow, have a very high Heritability, like 0.4, is very good. But the problem with the disease, with the mono response, the heritability to the any pathology is very lower. 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So, what do you mean this in the reality? It's very easy. I have one female resistant, I have one male resistant, I cross both parent, and I am waiting of the new generation irresistant. With the lower heritability, no. So we don't have guarantee of to cross two parent with the resistant and to get 
child with their system. That is the problem. So we need another alternative. Of course, here is very important in this system, in the response of the system of genomics, because we can uh, get what is the gene involved in the response, particular gene. But the problem is that we have two interactions more, not just genetics or genomic, behavior and environmental. On each of these alternative put on contribution. For instance, an immune response, the genetics maybe have a great interest and the behavior just a little interest and the environmental control the environmental at a little interest. It's different, for instance, if we're uh, looking, for instance, color. Color is just one important one component of genetics, more in component of the behavior, and in component of the environmental principal diet. And so we have to, we need to make a balance between all these alternatives. We need to control it, environmental, we need to control of the behavior to apply genetics. Of course, in the closed system, like the salmon production or, or any animal production, we try to control it. And maybe some trying more, it's more easy, some trying is more hard, but the idea is we can and we have the option to control it, uh, the behavior and the environmental. So we need to maybe focus in genetics. Uh, this is a typical picture to demonstrate uh, a principal chain of the transcriptome. Maybe if you have some child of two or three years old and you present um, both of these uh, well, butterflies and the pupa, uh, maybe these child say are different species. Maybe it's good. It's just one child of the three years. So we know that it's the same individual. It's the same individual. But did individual have different tissue, different proton, different expression? And the genome of this individual is different of this individual? No. It's the same genome, have the same gene. The only chain of chain of the expression. This is the power of the gene expression. That's incredible. So we think that the, maybe the thing the, we think that the gene expression is very important in agriculture because maybe we can learn a lot of the profile of gene expression principle in disease. So <laughs> one postdoc one years ago of my laboratory made the question, okay, Rodrigo, uh, where are we? Well, uh, okay, we are here. Uh, so we have just one idea where we are. And the next question, of course, is where are we going? Uh, sometimes it's complicated, but there are many directions. Some direction is closed, and another direction is open. Um, but the idea is try to go in all the directions. And, and the principal advice is maybe it's go slowly, because maybe it's work, we go very fast, uh, <laughs> maybe we have many problems. Uh, so this is a typical situation in all the steel laboratory, in all the laboratory working in genome, is typical. Uh, more, uh, we have to fight with the typical idea of the gene expression on turn off. I can to turn off one gene, I can, I can to turn on one gene, and nothing more. One lineal thinking, you know, the typical paradigm of the molecular biology. One gene, one mRNA, transcription, translation, 
and protein. But this paradigm of molecular biology, now we know that don't work. It's not just one lineal idea when turned off. Okay, I can turn on one gene and have one protein. Okay, I can turn off this gene and don't have this protein. No, it's not very easy. Uh, we know that we have, for, for instance, splicing. Splicing is a typical alternative to the many, many organisms to have a lesser amount of gene, but a huge amount of protein. It's typical in human, for instance. It's typical. In human, we have a very little amount of gene, but we have a lot of protein. That is uh, one evolutive alternative or evolutive strategy the many organisms to have an economic genome, economical genome, but a lot of protein. For instance, in vegetal, in some vegetal, some people think that there are not many splicing. For this reason, there are a lot, a lot of genes, yeah, very, very big genome in plants. But in salmon, we know now the splicing situation is very, very important. So when we get any gene, it's just the first step. Okay, I am very happy, I have this gene, perfect. But we know now, from this gene, I have different isoform, different alternative. So mean the next step, obligation of the next step is go to the isoform uh, uh, from this, this gene. So uh, it's a very, very important work. It's not just to make a notation of the gene. It's to make the notation and the splicing forms. So, also, we have another problem, microRNA. We know now it's typical from human, it's typical from the model organisms, don't where we know the interaction between mRNA and microRNA. MicroRNA micro put in the tree print of the mRNA and uh, make regulation. All the time, maybe don't regulate them. So, what did, what did it mean in, in the practical? In the practical, say, okay, maybe I can have one gene with a lot of mRNA. Oh, I think this gene have a huge expression. Perfect, maybe. But how did the interaction of this gene with microRNA? Maybe a lot of microRNA can interact with this specific mRNA and make don't regulation. It's another alternative. So, complication after complication, complication after complication. Well, uh, after of this complication and a lot of more complication, of course. Uh, we continue with uh, our positive uh, mentality and we think in a very good model. For us, a very good model is a typical model from the typical experiment. The typical experiment, for instance, is make a challenge, a challenge test, for instance, of the disease, when we have a lot of family, a lot of group, and put one specific virus, one specific pathogen, virus, bacteria, blah, 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 and we make a challenge test, and we, make, and we wait one time, a specific time for each pathology, for each pathogen, and we have lucky, we are lucky, we have animals with the low mortality in the time, and we have, of course, organisms with the high mortality. Some people think, okay, this individual 
are resistant here with a particular genotype and another individual are not resistant are family of this group are susceptible for that are not interesting for our model why because if we back to the first question 20 minutes ago when I say what is the problem? The vaccine, the immune stimulant, or the organisms? Remember? And I say, oh, I buy this vaccine, but this vaccine don't work. Mm, we may be uh, another alternative, if you remember, is the guilty is not the vaccine, it's the organism. But we have now some platform. We have now some marker, molecular marker, to evaluate both hypotheses? No. But this model can give that this option. But because these individuals, these organisms, make filter. So if you have any, any organisms, for instance, a susceptible organisms, and you can transform this organism with any vaccine, with any immune stimulant, in one resistant individual. This susceptible organism with this vaccine or with this immune stimulant need to show the same profile of the gene expression of this individual. But this individual is resistant and say, okay, guy. You can be like me, okay, so you have to turn on this gene because I know what is the gene that are necessary to make resistant. Why? Because I am resistant. So, is there any vaccine or any immune stimulant or antivirus, blah, 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 blah? No, antivirus, no, but antivirus, the target is the virus, uh, need to turn off the same gene. This is a very logic proposal. This is a very lo logic hypothesis. But for this hypothesis work, we need the resistant organism. This work with the resistant organism. If we don't have resistant organism, we, can, we, can, uh, we cannot work in this model. So our idea is not new. Uh, maybe some modified idea, but uh, Charles Darwin have the same area, some the same work in the same area and have the same idea. So genetic variation exists be between population. Individuals have different traits, of course, and differential reproduction. Those with best adaptation more likely to survive and reproduce. The fight of the more strong is typical thinking of Darwin. Here, it's the same. So our idea is not new. Our, our idea have a lot of years. It start with Darwin. Just we are looking to a similar idea, apply all the idea and hypothesis of the Darwin now in the our era. So, but we have another complication. Maybe Darwin don't know that. What's the difference between resistance and tolerance? But it's, it's very important. But the result of the, this issue are, is very different. Resistant is one individual with the capacity to uh, stop of the replication of the any virus or pathogen. It's wow, it's important. I have the capacity to stop of the replication of the any pathogen in my body. If you have this capacity, you have resistance. The resistance are most important because the resistance with this capacity 
are not vector to infect another individual. Why? Because they stop the replication of virus. This is a target. Uh, what is tolerance? Mm -hmm. It's another de definition. It's what organisms with the capacity to live in the time, but with the pathogen in the body, with the pathogen in own system. This is the tolerance. Tolerance is good also, but the problem with the tolerance is the tolerance can uh, be vector to infect another individual. So the first idea is not just check with the talent test if some family or some group live in the time. Oh, this individual are racist. No, this individual or this group or this family are candidate to be resistant. Not just resistant, it's candidate to be, to be resistant. What we need to check, check first is this individual are, have the capacity to stop the replication of the virus. In this moment, these groups transform from the candidate to resistant to the resistant. So, uh, with all this information, years ago, we start to work with IPN virus. IPN virus is very important virus of the fresh water in the uh, salmonic culture and the many organisms, not just salmonic. Turbot, for instance, is another candidate of IPN. So we can, we can see in this uh, graphic a typical mortality curve when we have here, for instance, family with a, a few individuals. Oops, sorry. Mortality. Anyway, don't worry. And for instance, another family with a high love of the individuals with diet. So this, in, this family is not very interesting, but the first family in the first circle maybe is a candidate to make resistance. Very important. When we get this result, we are very happy. But we can say in my group, say, okay, perfect. We have candidate of resistance. So in this moment, we can start to work. But if we don't have resistance, we cannot, we cannot work. So the first step is complete. Perfect. We have candidate to resistance. So in, is, this is another uh, graphic with an, uh, the same curve with a, a lot of family. These experiments are very, very expensive. It's very expensive. And are very controlled with the authority of my government. But we are, we are uh, making infection of the very, very dramatic, very, very dangerous virus. So we have all the inspector, all the people of the government shaking every step that you, uh, you have in the everyday. It's very complicated. So uh, we tried, for instance, in one time modulation, check typical uh, profile of the gene expression of the, uh, in the time of the different gene. Mm. We don't have focus, sorry. Uh, typical genes interferons, TAP, uh, MX1. Maybe we can see uh, better in another slide. So the idea is the typical in the time post infection, time one, time five days, time 21 days, we got a typical trends of the several gene. We can have more expression from one day to the one day of infection to the day five, and then done. That's it, for instance, start one. 
Another gene is uh, in yellow. In yellow, you have, uh, sorry, I can see well. Well, uh, the idea is uh, here we have uh, the typical susceptible group for here. And here we have the trend of the resistant group. If you can compare it, both trends are very different. Here, don't work the expression of the gene. And here, it's work. For, me, for this reason, maybe this candidate gene are very important, or at least we think are involved in the immune response. They are very classical gene. But it's very important. It's incredible, this comparison. All the people in many publications just make challenge tests, take a group, any group. For these people, don't matter uh, what is the origin of this group, anyway, wherever. Make the challenge test, uh, make uh, gene expression analysis. But what is the implication of the genetic background of this group? It's very important. We demonstrate that is very important, at least in the time modulation. So we, we made our, uh, it's just one paper. Uh, we make a typical AST analysis. We construct library of it's a very good uh, experiment. Some many laboratory uh, that work in genomics. Uh, we make our web page. We are the, all the gene that we find in the, our library in boot group, subtly and resistant group. Well, but the first step is to know what is the gene involved in this response. We check here uh, just for gene. We present show here a lot of gene. So, after <laughs> the next step, of course, was work on with macroarray. And uh, uh, now there are different platforms of macroarray in salmon, to, for truth, for Atlantic salmon, but I like very much the, the, the macroarray of my friend uh, Ben Coop from the laboratory of um, the University of Victoria in, in Canada. Uh, it's a good group. Uh, we collaborate a lot with them. So uh, we make a challenge test with macro experiment of IPN. The typical experiment with challenge, we have control. It's a typical experiment. You, you know very well that. Uh, with mod time of, of modulation, with the typical analysis, eh, and of course, with the comparison with QPCR. We work with the skin, spleen, uh, head kidney, but uh, spleen and head kidneys are uh, uh, immunological tissue in fish. So, what happened? Well, uh, we have just as a summary. It's a little summary. We have no specific immunogen. Uh, we have a specific a specific immunogen. We have transcription factor with a different profile of expression with the day. Of course, we have very important uh, gene for us, apoptosis is very important. FAS uh, in the group of the specific gene CD8, a typical immunological gene, is a surprise, important. MX protein, we expect the gene, but it's a favorite gene of the many immunological people. It's antivirus gene. Uh, Kupfer cell, if, if there are many genes with other many different. So, what make now with all the list of genes? 
What is the problem with macroarray? Okay, we have a, a long list of genes. Uh, well, we have a group of genes, but we need to try to reduce this list of genes in one important gene. So, uh, we, this is the next publication, is, this publication is, in, is acetate in veterinary immunology and immunopathology. Uh, with uh, try to relationate the phenotype susceptibility or resistance with different gene expression, and we get very interesting results. So, for instance, we have here in the uh, gene in the group of the uh, um, immediately respond. So, you know that we can separate the immunoresponding adaptative and respond immediately, you know. So, uh, we can see here gene of the first group with the first response and you can check, it's a typical uh, graphic where you can see uh, for individual, the line is the middle of the average, sorry, and the ACE is the susceptibility, the R is the resistance, and the number is the day. One day, five day, 21 day. We can see that. Look on the first group, susceptibility organisms, we can, the similar trends, we can start with expression, we can go to the plateau, and then, we can down. And in another group, we start with the same trend, we start with expression, we can go to the maybe plateau, and we can continue with the up of the expression. It's very different. So, all the publication just evaluate expression, maybe the same gene in any group, but don't make the comparison. And the comparison is very different. It's important if we are working with the resistant associated organisms to interpret it to the genetic expression result. It's very, very important. So maybe the only difference of the different pattern with the rest of gene is, is MX1 the very, very favorite gene of the many immunological people. Look, star, plateau, but not down. Stay in the same line with the more higher expression in the source of the group. And here, the same. MX1 have, this, have the same trends of the expression between both groups. What is the conclusion of that? MX1 is not important. Wow! The referee, one referee say, please, you are trying to down the thing of the many years. Yes, we're trying to make that say to the immunological people, no, the MX, MX1 is not important. At least in this response of this pathology. But if this gene uh, were important, we can say different trends between resistant and between susceptible, but we don't have different strength. So this gene is not important. I mean, okay, of course, okay, uh, it's important, right? But I am trying to, 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 to explain the model of, 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 of my model, right? It's not important for my model of the, between resistant and susceptibility. So this is very interesting. But many group, many private company, and many group in Chile, in Norway, in Canada, use this gene to separate two organisms with response and organisms without response. 
So now, for these people, we have to say, okay, guys, we have to change the gene. This gene don't work more. So we have, uh, of course, we have gene of the adaptive response, and the trends is very similar. We can start, we can go to the plateau, and we keep or down. So both response, typical response, present the same trend between resistant and susceptible organisms. So we make uh, enrichment geo gene ontology of the, our uh, library and the, our uh, microarray study. We can get of the immune response of the cytokine activity is the most important category of the gene in the IPM response. So we maybe we have to need concentrate in this area, in this, the response of cytokine. So, uh, our idea, maybe we confirm our hypothesis with IPN at least, where we have different phenotype with different genotype with the influence in the state of the disease. But, of course, it's very important, the environmental effect in our work model. So we make another publication in one specific uh, paper in the uh, journal, sorry, in agriculture nutrition, but in some close system like the salmon agriculture, all the people try to control all the condition, all the condition. But maybe the more, compli con more complicated condition now is give to the, all the fish one diet with vegetal protein. So we can try to evaluate what is the impact of the, this chain of the protein origin in the expression of the specific gene. Uh, we, we have to make this evaluation with the merge of the two experiments. One experiment with different diet and keep different diet more or less two months and then to make a challenge test. But it's very logic that to express several immunological gene, you have to make first the of activation of the gene and the activation of the gene, what is a stimuli? The stimuli is pathogen. But again, make a challenge test is very complicated, it's very expensive, it's very expensive. And in this ex particular experiment, we make one experiment two months of the diet and to make a challenge test, wow. So our idea was evaluate the gene expression of the lot of expression without challenge test a very, very high risk. But we have a very interesting result with that specific gene, MX1. Because if you can look here, we have an expression of the gene in control. L is lupino. Uh, sorry, I don't, I don't remember exact, exactly what is the scientific name of the lupino. Lupino is one plant. Um, we, have, we, we have here P and we have here race. And what is more important here? You can, you can see in this particular vegetal from 15%, the same origin with the 20, 25 and the rice with, 20, sorry, with 10, 20, 13, we have a different expression in comparison with the control. So if we give this diet from here to here to the feet, we have effect in the expression of the MX1. Well, uh, for the referee of this journal, I think that is very important because 
is one uh, very good advice to the people to make diet with different vegetables. Say, okay, we cannot put in the diet 10% uh, of the rice because this person impact of the gene expression. Very practical idea. Well, uh, we have to try to mix, I know this, I am jumping from different area because all the area, remember, is just transcriptomic, but all are relatinate. Uh, we have uh, one, one page D of my, dog, of my laboratory say, okay, Rodrigo, now it's time to evaluate the macroRNA. Perfect. We try to go to where's the macroRNA in salmon. There are no macroRNA. <laughs> nothing said, there are nothing. So we can start from zero. So we are talking with the, my bioinformatic group in my lab and say, okay, guys, we have a new, a new task and to try to find microRNA in salmon. So we have a, a typical uh, uh, bioinformatic journal, very important, bio, bioinformatic, uh, with a, this is a, a look of our web page. We, we look where is, is the microRNA in salmon, but with particular focus in immunological gene. So our first talk was to get all the uh, immunological gene to know in salmon and try to evaluate uh, in, in silico way the presence of the macroRNA, the target of the macroRNA. So this is a very intuitive slide. We can, you can see here the name of the macroRNA, all the dates, and the most important here, you can see the target. So it's very important for, because people from Norway in this moment uh, open a lot of our, uh, our web page because they, uh, they can, or anyway, can check any gene and check if this gene have a target to microRNA. Okay? So this investigator or this people can think in this moment, okay, okay, careful with this gene, but this gene maybe can be controlled, not just for the typical expression, also with the one macroRNA. So this is very, very, very important. Um, this is our page. We can check a lot of alternatives. Uh, this is the same with a lot. This is the idea I showed you a lot of macroRNA, the new and old macroRNA. And the next step was is to link the transcriptomic or the gene expression with the ge structural genomics. So currently there are a big discussion. Uh, we talked 20 minutes ago about heritability, heritability of stray. But what is the heritability of the gene expression? I mean, okay, I have one expression in one particular gene or in one particular group. Uh, my son have the same expression than me? Look, careful, I don't talking about the physical trait, color, growth, no, no. I am talking about expression. My child have the same expression than me? It's complicated. The gene expression have heritability? Hmm. Uh, it's, it's a very complicated issue. Yet in this area, it's very, very important epigenomics. In this area, it's key, the work of epigenomics. So the most classical way to work in this problem is try to change to the transcriptomic to structural genomics. And the more characteristical example of the genomic, uh, structural genomic is uh, a SNP, single nucleotide polyphrome. Uh, you know that is very quickly, uh, you know that the polyphrome 
polymorphisms is very important because is we can look one polymorphisms or snip in one very particular position in very particular region of the gene. Maybe we can relationate the effect of the dominant regulation of the gene with the presence of the SNP. It's very, it's very typical. Uh, so we are working to relationate LD or linkage disequilibrium. You know that the, we have recombination between both parents with diploid organics. So the idea is try to evaluate one uh, very little position of a SNP but the SNP is, for definition, conserved. So we, we don't have to uh, lose the SNP with recombination. So we are looking a lot of SNP with LD. So this SNP is with LD or linkage disequilibrium with another SNP, with another SNP, with another SNP. So we have a haplotype, we have a tag to try to not lose the, this SNP with the recombination. So, uh, we have in this journal published recently uh, a, a lobo SNP in silico SNP, again with the focus in immunological organs, kidney, liver, spleen. With uh, uh, here's, the, here's the frequency of the SNP of diff from different genes, of course, in each organ. And uh, we have here in gene ontology category, biological pro process, molecular function, uh, of all our gene. Maybe if we can see with the detail, here we can see of the immune system is here, for instance, uh, here, as is not very higher. So all the idea is say, okay, uh, maybe it's now to think that the typical immunological gene athlete in fish are not, of course, are important, but are not very, very, very important. Maybe another gene is participating, of course, in the response with more relevant than the immunological gene. It's very important. So now we have a lot of SNP to evaluate in all the genes a lot of immunological gene. So, we have moved very fast, but you know that now we have the, is very quickly of the chain of the technology, and we have not just the Sanger sequential, this is old fashion, but we have the second wave of, of the technology of, of sequencing. I, I am talking about uh, sequencing by Illumina, Roach, with the four, uh, 454 uh, solid from apply, and it's come very quickly uh, the, uh, another wave of generation of sequency with the uh, Ion Torrent ATC, where we have uh, it's very excellent uh, uh, field of sequence. It's very, 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 very interesting. So uh, we have here. Uh, more or less it's typical, for, it's, this is a uh, typical slide from Stratton. Uh, we are here, uh, we are here, uh, in this moment, uh, we start with the high proof sequency, with the pyro sequency, uh, with the generation. So all the people is moving from sequence with Sanger to the next generation. All the people is moving from microarray to RNA transcriptomic with the second wave of the uh, technology of uh, uh, generation. Uh, it's very important. We have uh, some example of my team of the second wave. Uh, we have the Illumina high sec with different with different machine. We have, for instance, uh, make library permit or library uh, single library, very very simple. But the most important is this column. 
you can see, sorry, you can see, for instance, the amount of the data. For instance, you can make a per mate library of the 5 cent per base, per read. Per mate is to read. We have millions, millions of read. Million. The problem with this technology is the length of the read. It's very, it's very short. But if we, we want more longer read, we can move to the five, 454. But the problem with the, we, we got more longer read, but the problem with 454 is we have, uh, we get uh, a lesser amount of data. So, if we make, if we want to make transcriptomic, the perfect candidate is Illumina. It's very typical. I can talk more of the solid because solid is, is just, is the uh, worst te technology. The, uh, the most popular is Illumina and 454. Yeah, you can put in, in, in any search, for instance, uh, path met Illumina, and you can get a lot of results. So, we can make another challenge test, but it's, it's in this case with ISA, it's a very problematic problem to make country. We start with the ISA four years ago. Many people lose the job. It's a very critical social situation, very critical. Uh, but we, our hypothesis here is try to relate the genome background with the vaccine. Well, very interesting. What's the, what's the idea? We cross our finger to try to find the similar situation with the IPN, I mean resistant family. But we put now in this model another complication, vaccine. So you can see in, red, in the red line the typical control with the high mortality. We, uh, you can see here, for instance, uh, the SNR. SNR is the group resistant. FANA is the group susceptible. CV is, uh, sorry, it's, uh, here it's in Spanish, is with vaccine. It's, it's without vaccine, okay? So, you can see here in the resistant group with vaccine, this line, and compare the same group but without vaccine, the green light line, you can compare it that apply this particular vaccine, it's a commercial vaccine, huh? it's a commercial vaccine, you can see what is the effect of the vaccine in this resistant line. You can move from this mortality to this another mortality. This mortality is low, but it's resistant. But if you put vaccine in this group, you get this mortality. More or less 13% of the difference. Wow, that's incredible. And if you can see the susceptible organisms, for instance, this group, yellow, without vaccine, and the blue with vaccine. Of course, the yellow is the more susceptible organisms, family, so have the more higher mortality. We are awaiting that, perfect. The yellow line. And if you vaccine this group, you can move here. The vaccine is working. But the vaccine works better in the resistant group. So for any people working in, in any farm, it's more uh, economical have resistant group. 
but uh, with, the, with any vaccine, in particular with this vaccine, he can to reduce the mortality of this group. So the vaccine is more effective in one resistant group. It's effective in one susceptible group, right, but it's more effective in one resistant group. This is a good demonstration of the interaction genome background and vaccine. So, we make an Illumina sequence of the different strain. We have sick library, permit library. We have technical replicate, have the same idea, some microarray. We have biological uh, replicate. And we have, of course, uh, library, the organisms uh, from the spleen, the organ. With vaccine, without vaccine, the strain one is the SASUB3, the strain two is the resistant, and we have in the strain two, with vaccine, with vaccine, the replicate, and of course, without vaccine. So we can, uh, you can see there, uh, in this column, the number of the raw data, 100 per base, each read, with Illumina, we are up talking about three, ten million of read. Three hundred ten million of read. <laughs> By informatics, we, we need a, a huge capacity of storage to keep this information. Well, that's incredible. So in this moment, many, many people can use this technology but the problem is not make the library, but the problem is not make the sequencing. Of course, there are practical problem, but it's not very important. What is the more important problem? Problem, the bioinformatic analysis. If you don't have a very, very strong bioinformatic group, the ideas maybe don't work with this technology, but it's very complicated. We are talking about the million, million of read. So, this is the typical pipeline of the, have a lot of step of the uh, Illumina, where the trimming, the, the trimming is purificate each read with repetition, uh, with duplicate, etc. We have the assembly, with, in red is the software with Trinity, of the each library. So we have six assembly. And then we merge all the sick assemble, and we have the first transcripts of reference in Salar. And with reference transcription, we make functional annotation. We make mapping of, this, of, of the raw read in this reference. It's a typical pipeline, it's characteristic. We, and we have the uh, calculate uh, different expression with the list of the different different expression gene and with the finities make a gene, uh, enrichment of the gene ontology. So we have the the same number in this column is the raw data million of read. We pass of the this column to this another column. This is the clean data of the trimming etc. Uh, so how we have a big reduction of the number of read, a big reduction. Um, so uh, after we have the first assemble of each library, uh, the typical N15 is very good. Uh, the more short is 100 per base. The contig is very is, is very good, and the more Larger is uh, 20,000, more or less. No, here is the lesser uh, 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 length. But the number is at good. These are typical number of the bioinformatic guy. So we have here the first Frankenstein reference from the sixth library. We have the number of contig, 158 contig. 
with the M15 is, is very good. With the smaller, it's, it's not very good. It's the more smaller contact is the 68 per base. It's very, it's very smaller. But the more longer is very important. It's more, more, more longer. So it's a very good new. So the problem is the this amount of contic, the first here, we have just this amount of annotate gene. Nothing. <laughs> and the more higher amount of data is unknown. Why? We don't have database in GeneBank, for instance, or any database to make comparative genomics to annotate the gene. Don't have. So for this reason, also it's very important to weight the notation of the genome. But in this moment, we have just a few number, number of genes with annotation. Uh, the number of genes with more information is more dramatic. 6% of genes with AC number, so we can relationate the name of gene with some specific enzyme. 12% of genes with geo terms. 8% with gene with domains. Very complicated. So, anyway, we continue with the project and we make a, a typical statistical analysis like an ANOVA of one, just one level. Uh, it's a typical condition. Condition, for instance, uh, this is just one, one example. Condition resistant, condition susceptible, with vaccine, without vaccine, the typical uh, statistical analysis. And we can see here, uh, first, the gene ontology of the, uh, this person of, of gene, or 12, one person. This is the principal category. Maybe the most important category is biological process. Uh, we can see the most important is cellular process. No, again, immunological process. We can see, oh, sorry, oh, oh. I, I lose some information. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. So the idea here uh, is comparate uh, the information of this gene. And in this group, with the comparison of the dif differentiation between phenotypes and with vaccine, phenotype susceptible and phenotype uh, resistant with vaccine, the differences, I don't look the, sorry, I lose the, the slide, but it's not very important because it's a very similar uh, table. It's just, it's just 15, more 15 genes. So, so 15 genes are the res responsible to the, to the difference between resistant and susceptible with vaccine. 15 genes. Nothing more. That's very important. Because we have uh, a few number of genes that explain this difference. Of this group, of this group, the resistant and susceptible group are just have explanation of the 15 gene. Nothing more. So many people think that we present this result to say, okay, Rodrigo, uh, but you can say that the, this all the gene? No, of course. It's just the start. But we, we, we have to start from one point. And one point is on 15 genes. Of course, there are more genes involved in the response. But we are maybe now the most important gene. So the idea now in this moment is apply this gene, qPCR, SNP, and microRNA, and of course, epigenomics. But we are starting from one point. That is very important. 
Uh, well, you have a problem with the, my last my last slide. So um, this is my collaborator now in different parts of this world. Are very uh, there are many people. So sometimes I put the, a list the name, but it's very long. If some people say, okay, no, Rodrigo, don't put more more this list. Uh, so I put the group, nothing more. There are. Um, it's a very good, good group. So thank you for 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 that. Um, thank you for your attention. Gracias. Is uh, anyway have question in Spanish or English? Salmon. We know that problem, and of course, we know it's a very 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 complex challenge to try to suit this this genome. Um, in any process of the industrial culture, like salmon culture, the principal problem to uh, see in this culture is the disease and the diet, nutrition. There are two principal problems, disease and nutrition. In the case of disease, of course, we, we have an overlap of of issue, the, uh, the pathogen, virus, bacteria, of course, the host, but any species, the, the immune response of the any species is very different. Just one example, for instance, to ISA is a very important virus, but the salmon coho is resistant to ISA, but Atlantic salmon, no. Both species are salmonid, but are in different genus. But the first question is, why one species is resistant and why another species is susceptible? It's very interesting. Another issue in this area is the environmental. But uh, in the cultivate, all the people try to control it in the best way possible the environmental. So the principal idea here is the diet, because there are big problems to feed all the fish. Why? Uh, Ten years ago, the principal diet, the principal origin of the protein in the diet is animal protein. But currently, the diet, the protein in the diet is very expensive. But the principal origin of the, the protein in this diet is the fish. But there are not more fish, so it's very, very expensive. So it's necessary to make a change to the protein diet from animal to the vegetal diet. So the question is, what is the impact in one animal that the uh, natural origin of the protein is animal if you feed with this species with vegetal protein? What is impact in the immunological response? What is the impact in the growing? Uh, there are many, 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 many questions. So uh, the principal impact, of course, of the any any crisis of virus or bacteria is a decrease of, pro of production, and that is the principal principal real interest for my country. How is possible? to lower the number of the diet in the world, we eat nothing more. So the, about 95% the 90, of the production of the aquaculture in Chile is this, it's the focus of the southern of Chile. It's, it's, very, it's very funny because we, it's not aquaculture, it's salmoniculture, but the principal species that we cultivate in the, in the southern of Chile is salmon. Uh, the principal species that my country focus is Atlantic salmon, coco salmon, chinook, rainbow turtle, and in the northern of Chile, starboard. But, of course, uh, the most important, because the price on the market, this is a business issue, is uh, Atlantic salmon. Uh, in second term, is coho and rainbow true. 
So we have a focus in Salmonid. For my country, the Salmoniculture is a very principal uh, interest because it's a field of the principal uh, economic importance and the social importance, of course. Uh, the Salmonid is a very complex uh, group of species because they have a big problem, it's the duplication. Uh, more or less 50 or 60 million ago, we have the first duplication of, in this group of, of species. And you can see in these three different species, and a lot of species have a genome project working now. For instance, cod, uh, medaca, tilapia, and there are other model species like fugu or tertadon with the own genome project. So uh, in this moment, in this group of the salmon on truth, we don't have uh, any project. But currently, we are working in the genome of project. It's a consortium between Canada, Norway, and Chile to sequence uh, the old genome of uh, salmon, Atlantic salmon. And there are another group with France and USA and maybe Chile. Uh, we are thinking to start another genome project to sequence uh, the, uh, the, all the complete genome of salmon trout. So uh, the first problem we do face with this species is the genome size is very huge, it's big. It's more or less the same uh, genome of the, any human, about three, 300 million of per base, and more or less 13 or 25 thousand uh, gene. So it's a huge genome, and with the duplication, it's more complicated. So uh, when we start to work in the genome of, well, but every know in this room know that the vaccine don't work very well. The cover of the vaccine in all group is not perfect. So any, uh, any people in animal production think that they, I put one vaccine in any individuals or any group of individual, I hope that they will have a cover of 100% of protection. But the reality is not that. We have 15, 14% of protection. So we have 16% of the animal with vaccine that died. So what happened? What is the problem? The problem is the vaccine. Of course, we can think uh, the vaccine don't work. Yes, maybe it's one alternative. Or, or we can think also that this individual, that this strain, that this family don't respond for this particular vaccine. Maybe the vaccine is very good, but the problem is not the vaccine. The problem is the response of this strain. So what is necessary? We need a lot of vaccine for every particular strain, for every particular species, for every particle group? Maybe. In human, now, this is called personalized medicine. Now we know that every group every family respond in one particular way. So this therapy need to make an evolution from to the next step, that the next step is we need a vaccine to every particular group. Now in my country, in all the world, when, when, I, when I think in the, all the world, it's not all the world, it's just three or four parts of this world. I think in, in Chile, Nor Norway, Canada, East of Faroe, Irlanda, nothing more. The principal country with salmoniculture activity. But this country, now, if we can look how many vaccines are uh, in the market to ISA, 10, 11, to IPN, 8, 6, six vaccines. So, we have to, a lot of vaccine to choose. Okay. Uh, 
The genetics, you know, is very old. <laughs> the first uh, application of the empirical genetics is a very, very old. But we can see that gen the genomics is very new, just 10 years ago. 10 years ago, more or less. When it start the post-genomic era? Maybe with the first release of the, the first draft of the human genome with Craig Venter 10 years ago, 11 years ago. In this moment, we have an outbreak of disease. We have a many alternative vaccine, for instance, immune stimulant, for instance. But the idea is this alternative work well or no? So, uh, maybe some uh, in this room, maybe any people from maybe this room saw this film. It's a typical film from Hollywood. The name is The Perfect Storm. It's a, it's a typical history. It's a fisherman with a principal interest in code. And this fishman in the Atlantic North go to the sea. In this moment, this fishman uh, find on two storm, and the, this storm overlap, and he is in his boat is in the middle. So the same idea I have uh, four years ago, when we have a economic crisis, a war economic crisis, and the first outbreak of the ISA plus another virus, IPN, plus uh, bacteria, and plus one parasitate, Caligus. So if you merge economic crisis with all this disease, we have the perfect storm. It's a very, very complicated situation. So we, we have this problem. We have our first perfect storm four years ago. So in this moment, the government, the government of Chile say, OK, guys, we need solution. We need solution for this problem. Uh, in this moment, we talk with the government and say, OK, we work in disease, we work in nutrition, and we work in stress. We have a lot of data in in each of the three area, but we, we will focus in this talk in this is. So uh, what is a normal application of the know-how in salmon tree? We have maybe three steps. We have prevention. Of course, we give to the old individual immune stimulant, antivirals. That is very complicated with antiviral maybe create resistance. Uh, we, we try to allow the stress, because all the people know that they, we have stress. The response of the, uh, to virus or bacteria is very low. And after, we have diagnosis, screening, uh, looking new pathology, stress evaluation, and diet evaluation. And then, we have the third and the last step, therapy. The principal therapy now is vaccine. Bueno, os presento a Rodrigo Vidal, que es investigador de la Universidad de Santiago de Chile y es una de las personas que trabaja en la secuenciación del genoma de salmón junto con un equipo canadiense y un equipo noruego. El salmón es una de las especies más importantes en acuicultura Entonces, de ahí el interés en la secuenciación del, del, del salmón. Él está especialmente interesado en la relación entre el genoma y diversas patologías. Entonces, ya empezará con la charla. Gracias, Paloma. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my talk is, is in English, but it's, it's, it's very strange because the number of the people that speak Spanish is, is huge that the people that are speaking English, but uh, anyway, I, I think that this is important because mm, currently there are other people in another part of this world uh, maybe looking this this talk. Um, okay, first, my thank you very much to Paloma, thank you very much to University of Vigo, to the opportunity to present 
uh, just some parts of my investigation of my group. Uh, anyway, here is a lot of people involved in this work. The people from Norway, the people from Canada, and the people from Australia. Of course, people, another group of Chile. Uh, in the future, I think, I hope it's people from Spain, principal Paloma. Uh, okay, uh, my research and my interest of my group is in link of transcriptomic and immuno response. Uh, we call it this mixed immunogenomics. This is link between genomics, uh, principal uh, structural genomics and functional genomics, and the uh, immuno response. So the focus of my talk today is in two principal diseases, very important to Chile, uh, very important to another country, principal Norway, principal uh, Canada, um, Island, Faroe. So uh, when, when we heard the name of Chile, maybe the first is to think it's a long country, and it's really, yeah, we have a long country. But uh, the principal focus of the, our area of aquaculture is in the southern of Chile the Portomont to the southern. And the northern of Chile, principal, uh, you, you can see there, Santiago is in the middle, and the first green is the northern of Chile, in city called Coquimbo and Caldera, is just about 3% of nothing more ag agriculture. The principal species in the northern of Chile with the, uh, with the focus of the production is flat feet, like a uh, turbot, uh, a little of uh, uh, muscle, 